Morning you guys, it's Karen and I'm doing a video like no other I've ever done. I'm a little bit nervous about it because I've been asked for this a couple of times whenever I've mentioned my dear universe or the secret etc and I just sort of thought oh goodness how, how would I explain it and <clears throat> how would I do it but I just wrote myself down some notes. No spreadsheet but I just wrote myself down notes and I thought this is what's happened to me, exactly how it works, a bit of background, that kind of thing. So hopefully this will explain it. I'll probably call this video something like how to get whatever you want in life or something dramatic like that, I think, um, because that is kind of the, the premise behind it. So for those of you that don't follow me regularly or, or don't perhaps know, I'm not a believer in, I'm not religious. I'm not, I don't have a particular faith. I don't not believe in God, but I don't believe in God. I just, I don't believe in the afterlife. Um, and I've just mentioned this previously, which is how the Dear Universe thing came up again. But what I do believe in is the power of the mind. And I have ghost stories, which I've told you guys before. Oh, I've just remembered I didn't link, link the ghost stories on my other video. So I need to write that down. Um, I hate that. I'm, I'm so bad at doing that, you know, saying, oh, I'll, I'll link that below. And then I forget to do it. Um, but I talked about, I have some ghost stories, I have some things that have happened to me, but I looked into psychics and I've read um, a book by Darren Brown and I've read a lot on cold reading and the power of the mind is just absolutely amazing. So I believe in the power of the mind and I find it bizarre that some people believe, uh, some people are religious but don't believe in the power of the mind, but the power of the mind is, <clears throat> is a scientific fact, it's not a faith. It is something that is actually there. It's not disputed. It is an actual thing. So a lot of magic that's done on TV, etc., is based on the power of the mind. Um, but I thought it would be, I thought it would be useful for you to know kind of what my feelings are on religion and faith, etc., just in case there's any of you like me, are that are huge cynics, um, because I want you to know, yes, I'm a cynic and I question everything. And so these, um, when I first read it, I was a bit like, really, you just say this and it happens, you know. But I've looked into it, I've researched it and, it, and it makes it makes sense to me. There is a part of the process or the formula, whatever you like to call it, that certainly the secret anyway, um, that talks about vibrations and that when you um, repeat things out loud, it sends vibrations out to the universe, which eventually come back to you. I'm not really working on that premise at all. I'm working more on well, I'll explain how I think it works as I go along. But what I wanted to give you was just a couple of examples of how powerful the mind is. Um, and one of them you will have heard, you will have maybe heard me mention before in a vlog, um, and it's quite a sad one, but it doesn't make me sad now. Um, but I always had a memory of my stepfather, who let's just say wasn't overly nice to us. <laughs> um, I had a vision of, a memory of finding him on the stairs in a house that we lived in um, and he was just sort of floppy um, and I remember thinking he was dead and I was telling my dad this my own father um, <clears throat> a couple of years ago not that many years ago maybe five years ago or something I was telling my dad oh I remember when Roger tried to kill himself and I found him and, and my dad looked at me and he said no, that was me. And I was like, what do you mean it was you? And he said, the exact situation you're talking about on the stairs, at the bottom of the stairs, top of the stairs, wherever it was, he said, that was you. Um, and it was, my dad was telling me, you know, you'd, you'd been taken away, you were going to live with Roger, but I'd forgotten my teddy. I went back for my teddy. They took me back and said, run in and get your teddy. And my dad had taken an overdose and, and I found him. He was rushed to hospital, he didn't succeed but can you imagine that most of my life that happened when I was three or four years old and I have that memory or maybe I was older than that maybe I was five or six I have that memory but in that memory it was very very clear that it was Roger that I found there was no picture of my dad in my memory at all and that is the power of the mind helping you cope with things that obviously my mind couldn't cope with it being my dad so it placed somebody else in that picture that's one not so nice example a better example is at the hospital where I worked on the cancer ward we had a big um, study done where and actually it was great because volunteers came in and makeup artists and did makeovers for everybody that was having chemotherapy and it was almost unanimous people's results were better that day 
than any other day. Like they felt better. They were given questionnaires and things and they felt better about themselves. They felt more positive about the future. But there was a couple of patients that hadn't been responding well to their chemotherapy and their treatment began to improve just simply because they had been made to feel more beautiful, if you like, better, confident, you know, whatever. Um, so that's another great example. So you may have heard snippets of this before, but it's the kind of thing where you'll read wake up in the morning, look in the mirror and tell yourself you're beautiful. Um, if you have any problems with believing that, just wake up in the morning and say it whether you believe it or not. Um, and I think that's the first I read about it years and years ago. It was in a magazine or something and I thought, oh, how ridiculous, and I'd feel so stupid saying that. But it's basically, that's all it is. It's what you say subconsciously will affect your conscious mind. It's one part of the mind will affect the other part of the mind. And if, with that example, if you tell, tell yourself you're beautiful, it's not that you'll suddenly feel beautiful, but if you keep on doing that, your conscious mind will have heard those words and will work to make way, to find ways to make that a truth, to find ways to make that happen. Whether that is you start taking more care of yourself, you buy a new lipstick, you do something different that makes you feel beautiful, it, it will find ways to fulfill that. So that's kind of the background and the theory behind it, etc. I'll tell you how you do it and then give you examples of how I did it and what happened as a result. Um, and then I'll give you the specifics about what you need to do going forward and what I'm going to do next. So you need to write to the universe um, and say, so you literally get a, a piece of paper. You can either type it or write it, it doesn't matter. And there are two ways of doing it. You either do it as in, dear universe, this is what I would like in my life and then you write down specific things, or you can write, dear universe, thank you for this lovely life I'm living, and you write it as if you are already living that life. So I think I've done it both ways with both of the examples I'm gonna give you. In fact, I'm gonna give you three examples. Um, the first time I did it, I think I, it was, dear universe, thank you very much for this wonderful life I'm living. This is what I would like to happen now. And then with the second one, I did it, dear universe, I'm living in this wonderful house, yada, yada, you know, and did it as if I was already living this, living this wonderful life. So tell you what I wrote and I'll tell you what happened. So at the time we were searching for the house that we live in now. And it's very, very difficult to find property that is affordable, um, that is big enough for our needs that has parking for two one car let alone two we've got two cars and we wanted parking for two cars i wanted it to be within walking distance of restaurants i wanted it to be big enough that i could have a room i didn't know i was going to do youtube at the time but i wanted to have a vanity area that was kind of part of my my deal i wanted to have a dining room um i wanted to be able to afford a dining table there was a lot i wanted and we spent a year and a half looking and at, at kind of the end of the search, everybody was telling us, you are not gonna find what you're looking for for the price you want to pay. You're gonna to have to either pay more or you're gonna to have to settle for two bedrooms, not three, or you know one public room, not two, or no parking or something like that, or not close to town, all of this kind of thing. So I have had written, um, I don't know exactly at what point, but I had written this Dear Universe about the house um, I had written things about my health. I'd written things about relationships that I won't really go into, but just things like, you know, I'd still like to be, go out to lunch with my best friend and have a great relationship, strong relationship with my dad, that kind of thing. Um, but about my health, I wrote about, I wanted to be able to walk in the house without insoles in. I wanted to be able to potter around the house without my insoles in and not have knee pain. Um, so I wrote this letter and it would have been something like, I haven't kept it, but it's something like, um, dear universe, I, I love this house so much. Thank you so much for providing this house. It has three bedrooms, um, a massive living room, a big dining room. I've got a beautiful dining room table and we often have family dinners around this dining table. It was like a story. And I said, just down the road are some restaurants. We're easily able to park both of our cars. Um, we managed to get it for a great price. I'm so happy that we don't have a huge mortgage hanging over our head. So I wrote like that about the house and like I said I did that before we'd found anything and at the point at the end people were telling us it was impossible and I and I wrote um I'm so happy that I can walk around without having to wear insoles 100% of the time and that it's not causing me pain my joints are much better I then didn't really look at it no not really I didn't look at it again until 
probably a few months after I'd moved in here, it wasn't very long after I'd moved into this flat we're in now, um, and I got it out and it was just, I couldn't believe it. To me it was like magic because everything that I'd written on there had come true. It was like, I was reading it and I was like, this is the exact house I'm living in. It has two big public rooms, I have three bedrooms, I have my own studio in here um, with a vanity area. I have a beautiful dining table. Um, we have restaurants just down the road from us. We've got plenty of restaurants within walking distance. We can both easily park our cars. It's free parking. And we got it for a great price because it was a repossession. Um, and we didn't even get it because we bid the lowest. We got it because we could move in the quickest. So they accepted our lower bid where somebody else bid higher. Um, and I just couldn't believe how much of this on this had come true. I wish I could be more succinct with these videos. Um, I know some of you don't mind, but I'm sure I'm sure there's a way I could be a bit more to the point. Anyway, um, so because that one was so successful, I decided to write another one. And so I have my beautiful house. There's not much more I need from that. Everything's going well in my relationships. Um, what I wanted was to be able to work from home because I was working for the NHS as a research manager, but my health was bad in that. I was in a lot of pain with my joints and it was just getting more and more difficult to drag myself to work every day, you know, to get up and drive and just every, it was difficult work and there was many many reasons why it was so I thought right I'm going to put that I would like to work from home and I don't know how this is going to be possible but that's what I want I want to be doing the same job and I thought I have to specify doing the same job working from home um, and I thought oh, well, if, if I'm working from home I could get a dog because I've always wanted a dog so I thought I'll write that in it as well and I thought you know what being as we're asking for things we'd used up all of our savings redoing this house because it was like I said a repossession it didn't even have a toilet in it they'd ripped everything out of it I'll ask for a lump sum of money so I wrote down again and this time I did it in the way of dear universe thank you for giving me this lovely house what I would like now is by and I gave it a date by November 2014 or whatever it was I would like to be working from home in the same job um, by December 2014 I would like to have a dog um, in fact it was December 2014 that I said I would like to have a dog um, or I will have a dog I think it's more purposeful than that um, and I, we got Watson in January um, and I would like a lump sum of I can't remember how much I said but it's, it's around about what I've got in redundancy so I put that all down and again I put it away I didn't read this the, the idea is you're supposed to read it constantly and remind yourself of your goals but I didn't I just put it away like I did the last one um, and I got it out just after I found out I was redundant I was looking through my paperwork for something and found it and I showed it to Kevin we kind of laughed because he said well there you go he said you didn't specify when you said you wanted that lump sum of money that you didn't want to lose your job <laughs> um, but I was amazed because I looked at it and I said to him look at that I said I wanted to work from home I said that I wanted a dog you know everything came true and I think it's not magic it's not luck what it is is because I'd wrote it down because I'd written it down that I would like to work from home somebody mentioned to me at some point between writing the letter and me asking to work from home that there was a change in law in, um, in, in the working from home criteria and it was that, that um, employers weren't able to say no without having a really good business reason. And that's the point of these things. I don't know whether this will make sense, but had I not written that down, it might have been a comment that I didn't pay attention to. But because you've put that intention into your subconscious mind, your brain will pick up on it and it will hear the things you need to hear. And I may not, like I said, that may have been something, if I hadn't have been thinking, oh, there's no point, I'm never gonna work from home anyway, it was just an idea. I may not have paid attention to the person that was saying to me, the law has changed in working from home. I may not have asked, you know, I may have just passed, heard the comment but not thought anything of it but I heard the comment and I and I went and asked um, and I think I'm pretty sure that's because I put that down on paper and it was there and so your conscious mind then tries to catch up and make that happen um, so yeah again I'd, I'd achieved everything that I put on this list actually no that's not true I hadn't achieved everything because on both sheets of paper I should mention that I also said about losing weight and that's never happened but I think what that is is even when I was writing it I could feel that Mm, but I don't want to stop eating. I like eating. I really like my food. You've got to really want something, you know. And for me, I have lost weight successfully in my life, but it needs to. You need to have such a desire to do it, 
and the desire to lose weight needs to be bigger than your desire to enjoy the food that you enjoy and it just hasn't I haven't been at that point just yet one more quick example and then I'll go on to exactly how you you can do it going forward so I told Kev about this second one and he was like oh okay yeah now I'm starting to believe it a little bit because he's he's a little bit cynical about it which I just don't get because I'm saying to him my friend's the same actually my friend was cynical until I told her what happened and she's now done a dear universe I believe um and I said to him, how can you be cynical? It's not magic. I'm not saying that you're conjuring up spirits. I'm saying that this is how the subconscious mind works. And what harm will it be to write something down on a piece of paper? You know, what have you got to lose? Nothing. You've got absolutely nothing to lose. You don't have to make yourself look like a fool. You just have to write stuff down and that's it and forget about it. Anyway, for him, he was in a job that he hated um, and has been for the last two years and has been looking for a job the last two years. And so I said to him, well, let's write that down and let's write down your golf goal and I want a new job by X date and I want to be earning X amount of money. So he was looking for a new job, actually, that we were prepared for him to take about a £10,000 cut so that he could get better hours, be closer to home, etc. That's what we were prepared to do. But he wrote on this little post-it note, um, I will have a new job by April 2015, so April this year, um, earning X amount of money and then he put his golf handicap goal and he put it on a post-it and he put it on his wall. So it wasn't quite as complex as mine. You don't have to write a big long letter. If there's just one thing you write, you want, write it on a post-it, stick it on a, stick it somewhere where you'll see it. So he put that above his notice board. And the thing with Kev is it isn't like, I can't say that he wasn't looking for work before, but now he's put that intention in his mind He's looking for different jobs, but it, it might well open up your mind to more, like you might get offered a job, offered um, a communication by an agency, for example, and say, you know what, I'm going to go for that because in your subconscious, you're going to get a new job by April. You know, that might have happened, but he was certainly looking for jobs very, very well. He was doing a good job of looking for jobs. It's quite, quite a full time job looking for jobs. Anyway, um, he put that on his notice board and he got offered a new job and he resigned in April. Um, and he phoned me and told me about it and I took the post-it off the wall in his bedroom and I put it on the dining table and I put it at the bottom just saying <laughs> because he was very cynical about it and you know, he came home and he just laughed and he said, yeah, I suppose so. So now he's got his golf one for what handicap he wants to have, you know, and I don't know how far he is towards that. He keeps telling me he's playing rubbish. Like yesterday he came home and I said to him, how did you play? And I was thinking, oh no, he's not gonna get his handicap and then he's not gonna think the power of the mind works. You know, he's gonna then think it's all rubbish. Um, but he said he didn't play very well and then he got his results on his computer and went, oh, I was number 14 out of 150. And I was like, well, you didn't play that badly then, did you? You know, This is one of the reasons I didn't wanna do this video because it's ended up really long because on subjects like this I can get really involved and I could probably talk for a couple of hours on the subject you know so this believe it or not is me cutting myself down and not not saying a lot of stuff so how do you do this okay the first thing you do is you have to start off being grateful and actually being grateful you'd be amazed will get how much that will get you um, and that I could talk about that on another subject and actually Oprah's talked a lot about that but if you just write a daily kind of I'm grateful for this or think I'm grateful for this that actually produces in itself it's like um, like produces like so if you feel lucky you'll be lucky um, so you have to start off the letter by saying dear universe thank you for and say the things that you are grateful for so for me dear universe thank you for the fact that Kev has a new job that I have a lovely home this is what I'd like next so that's your first way of doing it you well, on both ways, you write the, the grateful thing. Then the next thing you do is write a list of what you want. So, dear universe, I would like to be earning X amount of money by this date. Or, you, like I said, you can write it as a story. So, dear universe, thank you for this wonderful life I've got. Um, I'm loving the fact that I'm earning X amount of money and I'm loving my job. I love the people I work with. It's at this area, you need to be very specific. This is the, the biggest thing is be specific. There's no point saying, and be realistic. Like, I'm go I want to win the lottery. I mean, that's not realistic, you know, and that's not something, it's got to be achievable, but it can be big. You can dream big, but not like, I want to win one million pound tomorrow. That's not gonna work, do you know what I mean? It needs to be achievable, um, but it needs to be specific. So I want to lose weight, 
that's not going to work. I want to lose 10 pounds by December 2015. That's a specific goal. So you need to be very, very specific. Um, <clears throat> regardless of whether you're doing it as a story or whether you're doing it as goals. Um, you also need to not include any negative words in it. And that's something I'm trying to remove from my vocabulary, actually. And I annoy myself because one of the biggest things I do is when my knee is sore, I say to him, oh God, my knee's killing me. And that's not a good thing to say. You shouldn't be saying anything like that because that's what your subconscious mind will hear. Um, I, I mean, perhaps I shouldn't vocalise it, you know, and, and Kev doesn't vocalise when he's in pain, actually. But um, I should maybe say, my, my knee is sore today, <laughs> but not my knee is killing me, you know. But in these, this Dear Universe letter, you can't use any negatives. That's actually harder than it sounds, but there's a very good reason for it. The subconscious mind will not hear negatives. They will hear the, the actual words. So if you say, I don't want to have any headaches, it will just take headaches and want. It won't take the don't part. So you need to not say headaches. You would need to say, I would like to be, you can't even say pain free. It's like I said, it's very, very difficult. It's been very difficult for me to write down my goals about health. Um, I, I'm going to have a completely clear head. The headaches one is too difficult. I can't even remember how I wrote that. But let me talk about the knee pain one because the way I did that was the orthotics. So I said, I, would, I will be able to walk around my house without orthotics in um, comfortably. And I think I even put for up to an hour. I can now walk around the house without orthotics in. And I do, I am in pain if I walk for too long, but I never used to be able to walk at all around the house without orthotics. So I've no idea why that's changed. Absolutely no idea. So next on my list is I would like to be able to wear sandals because you can't fit orthotics in all sandals. I'd like to be able to wear sandals for up to an hour without any, no, I can't say without any pain. Cause like I said, you, you can't say anything negative. I would like to comfortably be able to wear sandals for up to an hour. Um, so that's a better example, I think. But the pain one is very difficult. With the, say, relationships, say you want to have a better relationship with your mum. You wouldn't say, I don't want any more arguments with my mum. You would say, I want to have um, a better and more open, honest relationship with my mum that will be improved by the end of this year, that kind of thing. But like I said, it's all about specifics. Uh, let me just look at my little list here. No negatives, specifics. That's pretty much it. It can be as long or as short as you want it to be. It can be three pages long. It can be two lines long. Like I said, Kev's is just on a post-it. I will have a new job by April earning X amount of money. Um, mine is, my last one was about two pages. Um, and I even put it in categories. I had family, money, work, health. <laughs> um, my next one is not going to be as long. I'd say my next one will be a, about a page long and I will be... What will I be saying? I've put down here, I, my big thing will be about my photography because I'm not, I'm not sure where it's going. The trouble is you kind of need to know exactly what you want because the more you know about what you want, the better you'll be able to get it. Whereas with my photography, I know that I want to be earning money from photography. Um, I'm just not sure how. I'm not sure if I want a studio, for example, because I don't know if that will work out. So I'm going to write, I would like to be earning, and I haven't even worked out how much this is, but X amount of money from photography by June 2016, probably. I'll give myself to the middle of next year. So I'll probably write that. Um, I will be writing things about my weight again because I do feel a lot more motivated now. So I'll say that I want to lose 10 pounds by whenever, like I said, it's got to be realistic. Um, I will also write some things about my health because my blood pressure has gone up again and my cholesterol. So I will write my cholesterol will be X amount by such and such a date and my blood pressure will be such and such by such and such a date. That's really important to me because once I put that into my subconscious, I know that then I'll be more able to, to achieve that. And there'll be things like noticing how much salt I put on. It's, it's so simple. It's such a simple method. But saying and writing it on a piece of paper, you wouldn't believe the difference between lying and daydreaming and writing something on a piece of paper. It's actually putting it there. It's, it's setting it in stone. Um, because I, at first when I read about it, I thought, well, I think these things, I lie and dream about these things at night. So why is it any different writing it on a piece of paper? It just is. There's something in your subconscious that works that way. You write it down, it becomes an intention. And so I know by writing down, I will reduce my blood pressure, that my 
conscious will notice the times I'm using salt and that's something that helps my blood pressure reduce. As to what you do with the letter when you finished it, you can write it. My friend Tracy was asking me, you know, does it have to be on a piece of paper? Does it have to be typed? Um, and I said, no, it can be anywhere you want. So she's put hers on her phone, on her iPhone, and I don't know whether she's reading it or not. I meant to ask her actually yesterday when I saw her, but you can put it on a piece of paper and hide it away like I did, but it's better if you read it because the more you read it, the more it will sink into your subconscious and the more, the quicker you should achieve it really and the more you can remind your conscious brain of what you want to achieve. But like I said, I put both of my letters in my box and ignored them, but with care if he's got this little post it on the wall, um, you could do it on your phone and then on your phone, in fact, I might well do mine on my phone because that would be easier to read more regularly um, and if I forget about it then hey ho it's the same as the letters you know so that's it a long video I know um, but hopefully you don't mind because you requested it and I feel like everything I've told you is relevant it is it will help you to understand and believe in what you're writing there's two books that I have found um, to be helpful and that kind of help me understand all of this although they are a bit far-fetched I would say so the first one is the secret and it's, I actually listened to it on tape. I don't know why. Oh, I know, because you can't read while you're driving. And I wanted to listen to something that was gonna help me get the future I wanted whilst I was driving to work. I had a 40 minute drive. So I wanted to use that drive for something useful. And I listened to The Secret, but I didn't like the lady's accent. Um, it, it was just a particular, it just was a voice that grated on me. Um, but you can get it on tape. So The Secret, and it's, like I said, it's a little bit too far-fetched for me. She does things like you get um, a bank statement and you change it into millions of pounds. And but, but the basis of it is exactly what I'm telling you with this whole dear universe. What you put out there is what you get back. Really useful to me. You know what else I'm going to put on my list about Watson? Definitely going to put Watson on my list. Something to do with he will be nice and quiet <laughs> and well-trained by next year. The other one is called, um, I think it's called You Can Heal Your Life, but it's by Louise Hay. I'll put both of the books that I'm recommending below for you. Um, and that one is, is the same kind of thing. Now, Louise Hay actually healed herself of cancer without any chemotherapy. So that's a really interesting one to me. She did that with the power of the mind. I think you'd have to be a very specific person to do that. Me personally, I wouldn't, despite me believing on, in all of this, give me the drugs. <laughs> that's where I'm at, you know, but with something like this, I do think it works. The final thing I wanted to say though, is if you, if you think that you're unlucky, you'll be unlucky. And I have mentioned this before, and it's happened in this giveaway. You guys that have watched, I did, I've done a kind of secret giveaway, if you like, that runs out maybe after I put this video up, I'm not sure. Not long, not long until the closing date. Um, but even with that one, I've got ones you know, I've got emails or comments saying, I hope I win, because I never win anything. And it just, I feel so sad for that type of person. And I know a lot of people like this. Oh, it's terrible, this always happens to me. Um, because I think you've got a computer, or you've got access to a computer, or a phone. You've got access to technology, which would suggest that you have food on your table, and you can pay your rent. You know, you have a phone at least, or a computer, or an iPad, you have something you're not in a bad way, you know, and you have the ability with your hands to type that comment. So you're not in a bad way. And I just think it's really sad when people think themselves so unlucky. And when they say, I never won anything, I never win anything. I've never won anything. I don't consider that to be unlucky because why should you get something for free? Some people, somebody in the world would have won it that needed it. And I'm okay with that, you know. And I just think if you go into this thinking it will never happen to me, then it, it might not work for you. You have to be, you have to be grateful. It's like I said at the beginning, you have to be grateful for what you've got and you have to feel a certain amount of luck. And I, it annoys me when people say to me, you're so lucky in one way, because I'm like, I'm not lucky. I've worked very hard for everything I've got, but then I feel lucky. You know, I do feel like there's a lot of things that have worked to my advantage and that are luck. So you do need to feel a certain amount of gratitude and luck yourself. So that's everything. I am actually gonna go in now and write my list because it's on, on my daily to-do list is Dear Universe. So that's one of the things that I've got to do is to write my Dear Universe list. Um, and then I will, I'm probably not gonna put mine on the wall. I will write it down. I'm gonna add some Watson things into it and I will probably fold it up and put it in my 
box and then I'll probably put a kind of summary of it on my phone so that it's there for me to check to look at and see how I'm doing with it you know um, if you've got any questions on this please feel free to put them below I'm sure everybody will have comments on this and what you think of it and what you don't etc so please feel free to leave those below and I would love to know what your kind of goals are and everything and even if you don't want to write a whole list put it in the comments here you know I'd like to have such and such by such and such a date put it in the comments and then you know hopefully that will be your intention um, and tell us as well if you've done it and it's worked for you um, I think that's everything I will tell you what's on my face I have got on YSL Fusion Ink Foundation which I'm nearly out of um, so I'm gonna have to buy another one because I just love it love my Fusion Ink Foundation on my eyes I've got um, it's called I think it's called Sex Kitten it's a Bare Minerals Loose Eyeshadow and then MAC Petal Power Blush and then this is just a number seven nude, I think it's called nude or perfect nude, something like that, lip liner. Thank you so much for watching today and bearing with me. Best of luck with your D Universe goals and I'll switch again soon.